for God. You are worthy to receive all the praise. For you alone are the air that I breathe, the song that I sing. You're the lover of my soul. Hey, hey, with you there is no impossibility. Hey, with you I can move a mount. Whatever you say will surely come to pass. In the mention of your name, every knee must bow. Hey, unchangeable. Unchangeable. Son of victory. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah, ministries. I have missed you. Oh, 
this was for me. Can we do one for Jesus Christ? Can somebody shout praise for Jesus? Jesus! Jesus! Praise him, Jesus! Give him glory, Jesus! Woo! Mm. What shall I render? What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? Lift your hand with me, Father. We thank you for giving us this one more privilege to stand in your presence. We do not take it for granted, Lord. So we bow in submission, recognizing your supreme authority and saying, Reign, O Lord, reign in our midst in the name of Jesus. Lord, we dedicate this time unto you and you alone. As John the Baptist pray, so I pray that I may decrease so you may increase. Lord, I pray that today may be the day that somebody has been waiting for in a long time. A day of change and transformation. May it happen, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. And together we say, Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, while you are still standing, will you be kind enough to give one, two, three, four, five people high fives saying, Today is that day. <laughs> Today is that day. <laughs> the day you've been waiting for. The day for deliverance, for breakthrough. Leon Joe Leo, they say. Leon Joe Leo. Kababosha. You are catching the devil by surprise today. I say you are catching the devil by surprise. Something big is about to happen in a few minutes from now. Somebody's life is about to turn around. I see heaven open over your head. Your prayers are being answered. Hey. Ouch. Woo. Now, if you can, please, I have a seat. I greet you again in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Alf Lukau, and the Lord sent me to serve. I just don't know what is about to happen today.
because something big is about to happen. Are you with me? Hey! Something bigger than big is about to manifest. Somebody! Somebody help me have a fire. Uh, in the middle of winter, have a fire. Mm-hmm. one way but they shall be scattered in seven different ways can I hear you say fire Mm. you see the anointing of God is not to entertain you once it comes on you it literally makes you dangerous Look at the person next to you say, I'm dangerous. The devil knows what it means when you say, I'm dangerous. Because in about a few minutes, those who came by one way, I say, they came by one way, they shall be scattered in seven different ways. Whenever we are here, we screaming, we shouting. There is one who is not happy. He doesn't like your shout. He doesn't like your praise. He feels that it's an exaggeration. to say about everything you do oh you shout too much oh only for your pastor you're supposed to not do it this way the devil is a liar we will celebrate God we will scream we will shout we will jump we will praise his name Somebody told me, Pastor, do you know that the devil hates you? I said, it's okay. I also hate him. (laughs) 
And another person came to me and said, that, you know, all hell is breaking loose against you. I said, no, I'm breaking loose against hell. Hey! My name is Aflo Kau. speak to somebody out there I wish you were here somebody who's watching me I really wish you were here but I thank God because the same grace here may reach you just there is a portion that you get to only hear God is a good God. I'm, I'm glad being here. I'm glad seeing all of you. Please uh, be kind enough to have a seat and, and let, let's try together. Let's try to, to behave. Seven days of fasting is coming. How many of you are getting ready for it? Now, I, I want to make this call. Those of you out there, it doesn't matter where you are, you may be in Kuwait. Qatar, you may be in Afghanistan, in India, you may be in Pakistan, you may be in New Zealand, Australia, you, you may be in one of the highlands, you may be in Africa, in any pocket of our continent. If you're watching from Europe or from uh, North or South America, those of you in Canada watching me, I plead with you, seven days we are fasting, seven days we put all our priorities aside to focus on God's priorities. I tell you, after seven days, something will manifest that will cause your enemies to fall. Seven is God's number of perfection. So on the seventh month, for seven days, we will fast we will fast only from morning meaning that you wake up not eating anything till 6 p.m and after that you can eat but those of us in the church we will have a moment of glory with myself every day it will be a great moment we'll pray together we will have it for seven days so those of us who will not be breaking the fast, you break your fast from, uh, because we'll go till uh, uh, eight or nine, so come already. Or come with your bread, when it's six o'clock, you, you eat. <laughs> but we, we will just have the time. As we close our fast, giving everyone an opportunity, I want those of you afar who are intending to come, please come as part and parcel of the IVP. This IVP is a closed IVP because there are certain things that they will do there that will be exclusive for those who will be part of the IVPs. Meaning that they will not have, the, the, the ushers will not have anybody else. It, it will be um, uh, very close. You will understand it as I begin the series on building the altar, your personal altar from this coming Sunday. You will know why I say this coming IVP, as you're closing the seven days, it is critical. I will be revealing a secret that many who have walked with God have observed and have seen the result. But yet, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. I will reveal to you what is it that you have to do to knock that devil down once and for all. We have been speaking on covenant. But there are certain things that you have to know on how to go about that. Covenant has to sit on what is called an altar. Now, we know this is our altar. But my secret is for every trial, for every challenge, for every storm, even for, for every breakthrough I desire to see, I build an altar. Building an altar on top of my altar, linked to this altar. So those are things that I will develop with you. And I pray, if they had removed your womb, and they say you will never carry a baby, 
after I lead you on how to build your altar, the one who gives women a womb will give you one. They will call you a mother again. Now, just in a bracket, you see what I just say? Seem to be simple, yet it is the truth of God. When I say it seems to be tr- simple, and yet is the truth of God, is because today the body of Christ, none of us has the, 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 the audacity of standing with God for his word, saying simply, that God is able to give you a womb that has been removed. Someone say it is an exaggeration. Oh well, this is not an exaggeration. My God can do far more than just that. If you have faith, something will manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. I speak as an apostle of faith. My generation will know that uh, our God has not retired. The world wants your God to be fake. Everything that uh, you stand for, anything that uh, seemingly shows how great God is, is attacked, is painted black. You not catch us. I'm here to say, this generation will know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And for this cause, I am ready to die. We will see the power of God. Are you hearing me? And we will prove the devil wrong. But there are things that we have to do. After you have memorized the Bible, if you do not know how to decode what you have memorized, whatever you have memorized will not help you. Because even Satan speaking to Jesus, he quoted a scripture. To quote a scripture is a good thing. To decode what you have quoted is a whole new ball game together. Satan said to Jesus, it is re- Am I preaching? No, please sit down. I'm not saying but I say this I want you please make sure now now you register to be part of the IVP this IVP as we close the seven days fasting I believe it will be sacred sacred we have literally two to three weeks to go I want you to please make sure that you are part of it you must win this year cannot just pass with slogans this year cannot pass like any other year no this year must be different are we together lift your hand and say oh lord help me some of you have to take a minute of prayer at home and say lord i must be part of this ivp i i have to I will sell my, sell my socks to be part of it. There are things when you hear the prophet insisting, you must know is your call. I'll try here. I say, there are things when you hear the prophet insisting, you must, be, you must know is your call. Oh, well, last time, last time Papa was not there, I will be the here myself. Now, I'm I'm insisting for this IVP because I really want you to be part of it. I want us to do that thing together. I say you will understand when I begin to teach you on uh, um, altars. Some of our lives have been messed up simply because of uh, altars that are evil altars that have been built against us. You trying to pray in tongues. You pray tongues that are even you fabricated is still not working. It's not working. <laughs> because you see, the problem is not what you are saying. It's an altar. Let me walk this side. I, 
I just don't know why Satan does not lack my work. The, among few things that upset him. Please, I have a seat. I was making announcements that you have to be part of this IVP. Don't try. Be there. Be there. It will help you. Be there. You, in this IVP, you can choose to be part of it throughout the week. And if you're part of it throughout the week, we will try to make sure that you are taken care of as it's supposed to. And if you'll be here as an IVP, not just as, a, as an IVP, it gives me an opportunity to hold your hands. It gives me, because it's long, seven days, it will give me an opportunity to personally meet with you if God allows, pray with you, and help you to build that altar. But those of you out there, the IVP officially is from Friday till Sunday. If you want to be longer, you let the office know they will accommodate you because we have already a lot of people that want to be for the full week IVP. You'll be my guest. I'll stand with you. Amen. Lift your hand. Pray with me, Father. Today is our day, Lord, so I pray that you use me and bless your people through me. Lord, I pray again. Do what only you can do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It was long. I was taking time to pray there after. I was compelled, compelled to remain and rest. And to be honest, I don't know how to rest. I know it is important. And I preach on rest. And I'm still learning. Um, I was trying to go through the internet to find a school of how to rest. But <laughs> because oftentimes, when I say I'm resting, I have my own way of resting. <laughs> I have to be reminded, shh, that is not rest. <laughs> so um, I was resting. But now, I've rested enough. <laughs> we started sharing on the thoughts the Lord wanted you and I to develop with regard to witchcraft. And we had titled the series of messages that we were exposed to defeating witchcraft by saying so in this theme two things we want to throw in your heart one is that witchcraft exists and it matters meaning what witchcraft exists and its impact its powerful especially if you're not covered or you are still in ignorance the second thing we want to throw in your heart in understanding just in breaking down the theme defeating witchcraft is the firm idea true to the word of god that uh, witchcraft can be defeated witchcraft can be defeated meaning witchcraft is defeatable 
So together we went on this journey, breaking down truth that the Lord wanted you and I to know when it comes to witchcraft. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on all the nitty gritties that uh, were exposed to all of us here on witchcraft. One thing is true, is that uh, no matter how deep our teaching with regard to witchcraft was, there is still a lot more to talk about when it comes to witchcraft. The scriptures reveals that uh, Satan through witchcraft and all his uh, uh, workings, he has many schemes. The devil does not attack you using the only way he had attacked your grandfather. That's why the Bible speaks of the wiles of the enemies, the tactics of the enemies, the strategies of the enemy. And the Bible shows us that uh, we should not be ignorant of those things. Now, many of us who have embraced the truth that says that uh, we are set free, Jesus Christ died and gave us victory, are somehow led to a place of passivity, thinking that uh, it is already done and therefore it shall manifest. We must understand that uh, Jesus Christ paid the price and gave us victory. But the enemy, the devil, will always come between you and what God has done. So it is now to you to embrace the truth and implement the truth for you. Believers who are under the impression that because I am now a believer, a child of God, somehow my name has been deleted from the target list of the devil such believers will always fall prey to the enemy satan did not stop targeting you simply because you have received christ or you join a church in contrary now that you are on the other side he will do all he can against you i keep on speaking to you repeatedly if you do not come across the devil, you are walking with him. The reason why some of us will have all kind of trouble left and right, fighting battles every day, simply because the devil knows that if he will give you a breathing time, he will destroy him. Are you hearing me? So, therefore, child of God, it is important for you to know the truth and implement the truth. I stand and I say to the devil every time I see him, I say, you're supposed not to be here. Because the Bible says so. I do not ignore him because the Bible says I have victory. For ignoring the devil does not take him away. This is why Jesus said, behold pay attention behold pay attention i jesus have given you authority to trample on the serpent the scorpion and over all the power of the enemy now child of god please understand if it was not important for you to have authority over the devil jesus christ would have never wasted his authority to you the reason why he had given you authority is because he knows you will need to trample on the serpent, the scorpion, and over all the power of the enemy. Now, as a child of God, because you went to sit in some school with a logo, say theology, you see a serpent coming, you say, that, oh, well, me, I'm a theologian. The devil will not bat you, will swallow you with your theology. Are you hearing me? He will swallow you. Hey. You must arise. Are you hearing me? 
And then now, the reason why we are going through this exercise is uh, simply because the Lord wants you as a child of God to be the person in your family, in your father's house, your mother's house, in your community that will arise and defend the cause of light, the cause of God, by putting on the full armor of God and setting yourself in the battle, looking at witchcraft and wizard eyeball to eyeball and say you do me nothing and in the name of jesus christ i command you to back and go we again need the people who have authority but you see they can only exercise that authority once they are trained are you hearing me uh, the devil does not respond to anything else but the power of god you can speak english in english he does not understand it he has no sense of pity he does not understand love when the devil comes in, oh devil please leave me alone the devil does not leave people alone because they say it well do like me the devil never sees me laughing every time he sees me trouble comes from now on may the lord has served baptize you as a troublemaker for hell i say from now on may jehovah has served baptize you as a troublemaker for hell for the devil you a troublemaker uh, have a seat so we went through this journey speaking about witchcraft how to defeat it today i want you to exercise i want you to exercise the authority you have i want to lead you to a moment where we do not just say we'll defeat him but that we engage in spiritual warfare some of you you came with a knee problem and that knee problem did not come naturally as we begin to pray today you will see what will happen to that knee problem. <laughs> there is a person here. You're not with God. You came because you're trying. And you are shaking your pocket. Welcome. Already now you're asking yourself, my God, what led me to come here you will not leave today I say you will not leave today today we are doing it with Jesus and for Jesus your family will be free your finances will be free your future will be free somebody holler in the name of Jesus I have a seed. First book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 40. First book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 40. At the count of three, we read together one, two, and three. All right, you read it as it is written. Now I want to paraphrase it. I want to read it the way I'm perceiving it. I plea with you, don't be offended in your theology. Because as I read it, it concerns me. Then Afloka will say to Hallelujah Ministries. Uh, hear me it is important for us to make the word of god relevant by putting it in our context some of you have never met elijah you did not know if he had long hair or not but you know who is your spiritual father I have said there are people who are VVS 
very very spiritual they, they, they want to interpret everything oh well you see he mentioned his name he says he's elijah <laughs> have a seat Down, I say again, I'm reading it as I'm perceiving it, so don't, don't be offended in your theology. I am in the first book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 40, and according to what I see in the context of what I'm about to do now, it is said, and Afluka will say to Alleluia Ministries, seize every witch and wizard. You are watching me i'm speaking to you tonight we are doing it together barobosa ya baba here then i have look out say to hallelujah ministries seize every witch and wizard do not let one of them escape Tonight, there will be no escape for the devil. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? I said tonight, there will be no escape for the devil. That flying devil, that creeping devil, that walking devil, that swimming devil, that running devil, I say fire. I say fire. Seize all of them. Seize those in town. Seize those back home. Seize those in the open. Seize those in secret. Seize those in public. Seize those who are hiding behind some shrines. A fire is coming. As a fire is coming. In the name of Jesus. We're reading the word of God, and I'll look how we say to Alleluia Ministries International and to those who are watching via Facebook and TV and YouTube, wherever they may be. He said to them, Seize every witch and every wizard, do not let one of them escape. I stand again as an authorized mouth of God. I said, There will be no escape tonight. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I decree, I declare, there will be no escape tonight. I said there will be no escape tonight. You hear me? This is no joke. There are people who are supposed to be married, who are still alone simply because of a flying devil. There are people, parents, who have been looking for the fruit of the womb and God had already given them their children but some wizard had locked the blessings away uh, there are families who are in pain, no matter what you bring to them, there is no joy, because they have a loved one who is struggling with a disease that they can see is taking his life there are men and women whose hands are tied they cannot provide for their family. No matter how hard they try, they ask themselves a thousand questions with no answer. Lord, why is my life like this? This is not the working of God. There is a wizard. There is a witch and his craft that is playing cheeky cheeky with you. That's why the Bible says, according to my context version, that Aflokau said to Hallelujah Ministries, seize every witch and every wizard. Those who came from your father's side, those who came from your mother's side, the uncles and the aunties, the grannies and the magogos, some fire will come and consume the works of the enemy tonight. Hey, I say fire! 
if the devil knew that uh, you are connected to this altar and your spiritual father is this crazy he's supposed to leave you alone but today is too late Satan, we are coming after you i said we are coming after you are you hearing me no more he said seize every witch and every wizard please have a seat let's behave as if we mean it seize every prophet and uh, uh, of baal the prophet of baal were men who served another god and uh, the, influ the influence in israel brought about confusion move the heart of those who were aligned with god sons and daughters of the promise those called in covenant sons of abraham isaac and jacob move them away from worshiping god to the cult of other gods because of the works of the prophet of baal israel was no longer in the line and the path of the destiny drawn by the almighty god because of the prophet of baal and the prophet of asherah every plan that god had for the people of israel was literally dirty destroyed because of the works of the prophet of baal and asherah you do not take it for granted that the prophet of Baal in the land took dominion that the children of Israel who had the might of God displayed in the lives of their fathers and their forefathers decided to abandon God and to bow before Baal they literally forgot the story how God delivered them how God came with a hand and destroyed Pharaoh and his army. They completely forgot it. They all were meant to bow before Baal. And the prophet of Baal and Asherah were so evil that they to the will spared no other who stood for God. They came for every prophet of God. Behind them, they had a cunning woman called Jezebel. Jezebel, so cunning, but yet so influential and powerful, used every mechanism in her disposal to unleash evil and heat against the prophet of God. Men and women of God were literally killed. And the one we called prophet of fire is a man called Elijah. The Bible say he was from a place that called him Elijah the Tishbite. That's all we know of him. Even him, he was on the run. Because you see, you don't play with the prophet of Baal. You, you don't play. You don't say that me, I'm from Abraham. It's not enough. There must be confrontation of power. The enemy knows that if the church will never arise in power, the church will be under submission to him. Where there is no power, the church has no influence. Where there is no power displayed and demonstrated, not only wished, the church has no impact the church that will be relevant in our generation will not just be a talking church of the good stories of yesterday it will be a church that demonstrates whatever is written those who arise to demonstrate the power of god are the only one who can make a difference because you see bow does not bow because you spoke it well Oh, well, your name is Bob. You're supposed not to be here. You gotta pull power. The prophet of Baal terrified Israel until God's grace and anointing began to vibrate in the life of one man. It doesn't matter if there is no one else in the family who understands this you will be used by God. You will not destroy the prophet of Baal and Asherah in your life. 
I say enough is enough. God began to vibrate in this man. And he even said to God, Lord, I'm afraid, I'm alone. Jezebel and Baal, they killed all the prophets of God. God said, no, 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 no. I have kept 7,000. But this is your season. It's not the season of the 7,000. There may be 7,000 who believe what I believe, but they are afraid. They are still there waiting for their time. But for now, you, Elijah, go. So he went. He went to confront Ahab. Ahab said to him, are you the one throwing trouble in Israel? He was bold enough to look at him and say, no, it is not me. It is you and your father's house. King Mahundasha, who have troubled the nation of Israel. And he challenged the prophet of Baal and Asherah and Mount Carmel. They all gathered together knowing that they had the majority. They had the backing of the queen of the land. They had the institution of the land backing them. And they had the entire nation standing with them. So they stood bold knowing that we will terrify and destroy this one as we did with the other. They did not know you are AMI. Amen. When all this is over, I prophesy, you will come out of this victorious. Look, I, I can't speak for everybody else, but I can speak for those the Lord has placed under me. Those for whom I will stand accountable before God. When all this is over, you shall be the last one standing in the name of Jesus. In your spiritual DNA, there is no such a thing called defeat. You will win. They will lose. You will come out of it victorious in the name of Jesus. Have a seat. He confronted them. They came with the number and they did whatever they do. You know the story. When it was his time, the Bible says, among the things that he did, he rebuilt the altar. I will teach you about the power of the altar. You can pray for fire, it won't show up unless there is an altar. Fire does not come. Unless there is an altar. Uh -huh. So he, he built the altar. He knew that his confidence, his boldness, his power, his knowledge will be meaningless unless there is an altar. So he began there. You have to begin there. As you want to embark on this or that, you must begin where you're supposed to. He began by rebuilding the altar. The Bible teaches us that he put 12 stones back together. On the broken altar, no fire comes. So you must have an altar. It cannot be broken because fire doesn't come on a broken altar. And also fire doesn't come on an empty altar. So uh, after he building the altar, he laid this. Ah, he laid the sacrifice. I don't know. I feel fire. There is fire coming. Can you feel it? There is fire. have a seat. So he built the altar and put the sacrifice and fire came down. Fire came down. If fire, fire came down then, fire can come down now. If you really believe what you preach, you, could, you, you should expect it to manifest. If you believe that a fire, it was really fire, it was not an I idea, it was not a myth. I'm speaking to preachers. If you really believe what you preach, you gotta expect it and if you believe it and you expect it it shall manifest Amen. so when it's manifest it's not a trick because God is not a myth so fire came down fire and it consumed everything the sacrifice the stones they, they licked up the water everything gone God has his fire that is higher than the normal fire the fire of God came, and as Israel saw it, men and women immediately went on their knees. It is time 
that men out there may see the evidence of God in your life. It is time. They see you with a Bible. They see you coming to church. They see you singing hymns. But hear me, it is time. That the whole world may see the evidence of God in your life. When they saw fire, they all went on their knees. Just like a chorus. They say, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. As soon as that was fixed, the realignment with God was settled. Something key had to be done. If it was not done, whatever Elijah did with fire would have been lost. As soon as the realignment was established, the Israel had seen again that power belongs to God. And on the knees they say, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. Quickly. Somebody have me say, quickly. Quickly. Something else had to be done. If it was not done quickly and thereafter, every other thing achieved who they've gone to waste. What is it that had to be done quickly after Israel had recognized that God, the Lord is God? The prophet of Baal had to be dealt with. If the prophet of Baal are not dealt with, they will deal with your marriage. The mere fact that you came down, 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 it's a beautiful thing. And the, the two of you here say, I do, I do. It's a beautiful thing. But if the prophet of Baal are still roaming around you, the sweet words that you have to one another, baby, without you, my appetite is gone. Honey, every time I see you, I feel something. I feel it going. Let me tell you, if the prophet of Baal had not dealt with, those sweet words will turn sour. You bring the worst in me. If I have a regret in my life, it's you. The same two people who finish airtime, 275, gone. Today, don't speak to me. Speak to my lawyer. Hear me. As soon as everything was put in place, he said, Seize the prophet about. Do not let any one of them escape. Meaning that even when one, this is how dangerous they are, one escape, you in trouble. That's why today I'm giving you guarantee. I worked it already. I'm giving you guarantee. None of them will escape. <laughs> I told you I was resting the word says this according to what I wrote myself and that is none of the business of those who do not want it then Afluka will say to hallelujah ministries and everyone watching sees every witch and every wizard, do not let any one of them escape. Tonight there shall be no escape. I have a seat. Let's close this and begin. So, men and women of this fine ministry called Alleluia Ministries International and those who were watching live from around the globe ceased. 
every flying spirit, every devil, every wizard, every witch and their craft. Once they seize them, according to what I'm reading, I don't know if you have the same, but it's no problem. I have my own problem. And Elijah here brought them down to the brook Kishon. And I don't want to say that. It seems to be too harsh. So I'll change it. And Aflokal brought them. <laughs> now, I'm not changing the word of God. Please, do not accuse me of such, of such evil. I am not changing the word of God. I am putting it in a context of what I'm doing. And if you cannot live up to it, jump out of it. The word becomes interesting when it is in context. Do you agree? That's why some people love reading the message translation of the Bible. Others, the NIV and so forth. This is the Aflokal version. <laughs> and Aflokal brought them, meaning that those wizards, those witches, those who have been behind the cancer in your family, behind the HIV in your family, behind no marriage in your family, behind no prosperity in your family, behind stagnation in your family. He got them all, brought them on the altar of the Lord, and executed them. A witch must die. He, he, he brought them down. You, you caught them. I execute them. <laughs> well, they seized them. He didn't seize them.